By the time Indianapolis' Central State Hospital closed in 1994, its once sprawling, ornate campus had been reduced to mostly nondescript brick buildings. The old pathology building, a prominent marker of the asylum's past, still remained. Starting in 1969, it was converted into the Indiana Medical History Museum. The building once featured cutting-edge facilities and housed budding scientific research in the fields of pathology and psychiatry. One of the goals, then, was to find physical markers in brain tissue that indicated mental illness. And today, more than a century after the building's construction, an IU professor is bringing the research full circle. And so we went way beyond any of the standard techniques that have been used in any research uh, in this country and in Europe right now. And it paid off. Sandusky's past research has been dedicated to finding biomarkers and gene pairings in DNA. The hope is that with accurate genetic markers, a simple blood test could pinpoint various illnesses, speeding up diagnoses, and allowing for more precise treatments. And hopefully uh, the genetic data from this study will help pick the right biomarker. So when you look at uh, the biomarker expressions, we can tag it to a drug, and so when they first come in for examination, we can select the right drug for the right patient at the right time. Sandusky paid special attention to mental illnesses such as bipolar disease and schizophrenia, but was limited by a shortage of samples, or human brains. In a fortuitous meeting of minds, Sandusky spoke with Dr. James Smith, former department chair of pathology and laboratory medicine. As it turned out, Smith had recently gone through a collection of samples left over from Central State Hospital. When Dr. Sandusky and I were talking about some of the things they were interested uh, in working uh, on, on, on brain DNA things, I said, well, we've got this collection from all of the autopsies that were done here at Central State, and this might be something that could prove useful. Out of 1,400 cases, Sandusky narrowed his sample down to about 100, mostly composed of former patients diagnosed with dementia precox, which was then the equivalent of present-day bipolar disease and schizophrenia. Beginning in the spring and summer of 2012, Sandusky will compare the DNA from these samples with genetic biomarkers found in post-traumatic stress disorder blood samples that he collected over the last five years. Dr. Smith views Sandusky's research as fulfilling the original purpose of the old pathology building. You figure this is 1895, 1896 when this was going on. That at that time, we had very little understanding of mental disease, and pathology was just really blossoming as a field. Mary Ellen Hennessy Nottage, executive director of the Indiana Medical History Museum, agrees Sandusky's research adds to the foundation established by the building's original scientists. To me it's exciting because it is actually a continuity of an historic process and continuity of a very, very raw new idea that was present when this building was open, and the purpose for which this building was open, to discover what's causing mental illness and to, 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 for the purpose of finding ways to cure it. Hennessy Nottage says that the museum's displays and Sandusky's research help provide perspective on mental illness. One of the things that I find is when people hear the story of the brains that we have on exhibit, the tissue that we have from the autopsies were done on the deceased mentally ill patients, they seem to gain a whole new respect uh, with regard to understanding what they were going through in terms of their disease and the treatment of their disease. It's, it's very, very much a, uh, an eye-opening experience for people to contemplate that, that, that the, these organs are serving a purpose. It may have taken 100 years, but the samples, previously lying dormant in a storage facility, are finally making their fullest contributions to science. Reporting for WTIU News, I'm Dave Nicholson.